faculty member at City College of San Francisco. He focuses on closing the chief and gaps for underrepresented students. The story of my becoming a full-time faculty member at a California community college is one of privilege. In this context, that means that I received a series of benefits due only to the circumstances of my birth. They were not earned. I'm the grandson of Swiss immigrants and Midwestern farmers. They were hardworking folks. Grandma Hung uh, died of cancer before I was born. Grandpa Hung lived to be 92 in his own home. Grandpa Huntsman battled to an age of 80, while Grandma Huntsman lived to be a nearly death 96. I was born in 1966 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. My father was a mechanical engineer. So he had earned his college degree before marrying. My mother was a few, had a few semesters of college, but she was mostly a housewife. She took care of me and my sister, eight years older than me. I was a sickly child, pneumonia at six months, now, uh, sorry, uh, tonsillitis at two years. My mother's insistence got my doctors to perform a, an exploratory surgery that saved my life at age three. I haven't spent a night in the hospital since. Oh, wow. In the middle of my second grade year, now living in Faribault, Minnesota, my mother moved my sister, my little brother, and I out of my father's house and into government subsidized housing in St. Paul. My main concern was that I had to leave my dog behind. Later, I became depressed and difficult. But school was an escape. I enjoyed every subject, and uh, most seemed equally easy. From third grade through sixth grade, I had the same dull teacher but still did well in the standardized tests that we had to take on a regular basis. My seventh grade teacher was inspired. I, in eighth grade, I had a new and experienced one. We overwhelmed him, and I was a bored smart aleck. I did things like sit on the floor wherever I was when he asked me to sit down. <laughs> that year, I got to watch my mother graduate from college. For high school, I went to Maplewood Academy with about 200 other boys and girls, and I loved it. It, in addition to my studies, I had an on-campus job and participated in band and choir and was associated student body president. I also got to know the boys dean and the principal. For the first three years of college, I took whatever interested me without regard to other courses and whether it moved me toward a degree. Then I took a year off of college, which meant losing a $1,000 scholarship, which I didn't even think about. I moved to Colorado and returned to college for another year before deciding it was time to get a degree. When I took stock of where I was, I thought I was equally close to a degree in history and one in math, and I decided math was easier, and I finished it in about a year and a half. I was making a living as a short order cook and as a teacher in a, as a teaching assistant for math in a special program for scholars of color on campus. Well, still an undergraduate, I applied for a job at, in what we now call developmental algebra, I uh, was not truly qualified for the job, but I got the job anyway. You might think, as they say, that the rest is history, but that's not what happened. I spent three years in rural Tennessee working as a cowhand and groundskeeper and earned a master's degree in English literature before ending up as the coordinator of City College of San Francisco's math lab. In 2003, the math department chair called me to see if I was interested in attending the Kellogg Institute for Adult and Developmental Educators in Blue, North Carolina. It had fallen to me because he couldn't find a full-time math faculty who wanted to go there in the summer. <laughs> Kellogg inspired me, but I needed a master's in math. So I started graduate school in the evenings and late afternoon while still working full-time. I hadn't formally studied math in 10 years. My first class was a struggle, and my first test the worst of my life. But man I managed B's in my first two courses. After a year and a half, I was on track to finish in one more year. But the schedule was brutal. I went to see the CCSF uh, math department chair to ask if there would be a job opening for me. He said yes, and encouraged me to continue and apply. I remember walking up the stairs on the way to my job interview in my suit. In answer to one question during the interview, I drew a number line backwards without knowing it. They couldn't tell if I had done it on purpose or not. I got the job. <laughs> I was never a part-time instructor in the California Community College system. Today my salary is easily in the fourth quintile of salaries in the state and the nation. I get about 16 weeks of vacation a year, and I have health benefits for life. 
Technically, I am required to go to class, hold off summers, and to attend meetings for a total of about 20 hours per week. If I'm late to class, nothing happens. If I don't show up, maybe somebody would talk to me. If I skip parts of the course outline, nothing happens. My grades and my grading systems for students are never questioned. Every four years, a few people come to observe my courses on days they tell me they're going to be there. Short of a major felony, it is almost impossible to fire me. I teach a subject that every college student is required to have, and courses that have largely been the same for at least 50 years. Tomorrow, I will facilitate a panel of students talking to you about their experiences in pre-statistics class and in getting their education in general. Mostly, they did not and do not enjoy the kinds of privileges that I had and, and continue to enjoy. Yet their ambitions and capacities for excelling and realizing their dreams are just as large or larger. I hope you will come hear them with the same intention you have given me.